Thank you so much. Thanks for being here, everyone. It's so nice to see all of your faces. Um, so I'm Charlie Nanda, and this is the Needham Council for Arts and Culture. Today is Tuesday, May 18th. It is 7 p.m. And I'm going to confirm that all the council members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Um, so I'm going to call your name, Sharon Breitbart. Please say aye if you're here. Aye, I'm here. Um, Elizabeth Cook. Uh, Kathy Friedberg. Here. Julia Gould. Yael Halpern. Uh, Samantha Hoff. Here. Hi, Samantha. Uh, Gail Lustig. Hi. Anne McCaffrey. Betsy Mullane. Aye. Bala Mutukarapan. Aye, here. Uh, Charlie Nanda, aye. And Heather Simmons, maybe on her way. And Joni Shockett. Here. Hi, Joni. <coughs> aye, here. I can confirm we have a quorum. It's good to see you all. This open meeting is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive orders of March 12, 2020. Due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth, due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus, in order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. As such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Needham Council for Arts and Culture is convening by Zoom posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. The meeting will then be posted on the town's YouTube channel. Permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. Uh, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that generates accurate minutes. Uh, for any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. Please note that some attendees are, can be participating by video conference or by phone in and may not be able to see you. So take care not to screen share your computer or anything else that can broadcast or may be captured by the recording. And um, each, after each vote, we will um, conduct a roll call vote if necessary. Okay, thank you for hanging in there with me. Um, so we need to approve the past minutes. Uh, does, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? I see Gail Lustig's yeah. hand. <coughs> I motion to approve the minutes. Um, Seconded. And I see Sharon Breitbart seconding it. Does anybody have any questions about the past minutes? Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, great. Moving on. So reception planning. We don't have a ton to talk about tonight, so hopefully this will be a fast meeting. It's good to see you guys. Um, so the reception, Amy told some great news that we don't have to have it as a public meeting. So that's a good thing. We can host it as um, a, like a, a virtual artist reception and uh, a chat over Zoom. Um, that's one option. The other option is we could postpone it till um, the end of the year, uh, like the fiscal year, so August, and do it as like a reception kickoff for the new grant year. Um, I've been thinking about the two different versions. It's been a very strange year. Um, last year, we didn't have a reception at all because of the pandemic, and we ended up doing a newsletter, shared a bunch of information that way, the survey, um, um, this year, I would anticipate, I'm guessing, what do you think, like six or seven people might show up? That's generally the idea. So we could do a slideshow virtual thing maybe in June, chat with a few people, um, meet some artists that we've granted would be the idea. And usually a, um, a select board may member maybe shows up. Or we could punt it further to August and, and do it more as a meet and greet and talk about um, the granting as it comes up. Those are my two ideas. So if we do the, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Just to clarify, the end of our fiscal year is June 30th. 
June 30th, yeah. So and then we usually August break would July, be the new right? fiscal year. Well, yeah. actually, July 1st is the new fiscal year. Yeah, so if we did it at the end of this year, it would have to be in June sometime. We do a year end reception, a chat, maybe a slideshow. I'd ask someone mm -hmm. to volunteer to get some pictures together. Maybe we'd get Sharon to do her amazing breakout rooms on a Zoom call for us so she could be our tech. Assuming we have enough people to break out. Yeah, and if we had enough people to break out, or I mean, two rooms or something. Um, or we could turn in, into more of the year end, I mean, like the kickoff. And um, there's always been discussion about like, uh, doing, getting a chance to talk to grantees before they write their grants about what they're writing. It's a, it seems like it could be a useful thing for them and also walking through to answer questions about the process. That's more grant oriented. Um, the reception was supposed, is supposed to be more social and chatty and meet your community kind of thing. So um, what questions sure. do you guys have? And then maybe we vote on choice. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm either way really for me. Who's got a question, Sharon? You you have a question face on. Um, yes. Um. So are you are you proposing we do both or one or the other? Or? I would say one or the other. I would say so one. either a reception or a an event in the fall where we could also talk to potential grantees and that yeah, could take the I place have, of our reception. Yes, I just imagine. Personally, our newsletter has about 100 people on it. It's the same people that have always been invited to our receptions. We don't really have a good reach out list except for all these people who are the people who have applied for grants over the last like five years. Um, so basically our base of audience members is the same for each thing. So I don't know if it's thinking about what the artists need or want. Um, I've heard uh, expressed from maybe three people, three grantees, interest in meeting the rest of the community. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard from any other grantees or had any inkling in our community as to what people want or, or need or thoughts on it. I'd love to do a combination. I'd love to share Breitbart. I'd love to do a reception that um, for current grantees and invite potential applicants to talk up to to meet so it we have everyone there we used to, when i ran the brookline arts council we used to do that we used to have a meeting at least a couple of meetings to help people through the grant process it was a lot more complicated then but um i i don't i i would do both i i think it's definitely grantees focus on the community what we're doing I think it's it's probably a matter of whether we should do it, um, say, June, everybody, we would get together for an hour, June 8th or something, or June 5th, I don't know, somewhere in June, or whether we get together in August. June is a tough month with graduations. I don't know when Needham's is this year. First week, first Sunday in June. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking like an hour, usually it was on a Monday. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I like the idea of combining it and the potential to be in person. Um, I would amend that maybe not August, maybe September, if we can find times around the back to school nights and first day of school and things like that, just because August, you're going to lose a ton of people. Um, the goal is to get as many people as possible as much as the thought of us having a crowd is potentially stunning, but like by then having a reception where we can even um, kind of schmooze a little bit, have the grantees share about their events and then talk about talk to potential um, grantees in person. I like that idea. I think Zoom is, you know, for, for one of us to spend a lot of time putting together a slideshow together, um, it would be great for the fall. I think it's kind of um, extra work for people and we all have meetings and Zooms where we have to put presentations together. And I don't know if that's something, I mean, we could even over the summer do it a collective. Let's get all the pictures together. Let's create a slideshow and we'll have it by September. Okay. 
Um, That's just my my personal suggestion and preference. There's a lot of different options. Anybody else want to make comments or anybody want to, then we'll just vote on September thumbs up or thumbs down? Um, um, the, so just that. so you know, the, the Jewish, hand the up, Jewish so. holidays in September are the 6th and 7th. And then a week later, I think, I guess it's the 14th or 15th. Okay, that's useful. Thanks, Heather. He Heather, go ahead. Oh, I just didn't know how much the graduation thing even matters because the, how many of the grantees even have? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I don't know that that's where we you come when yeah. you come. That's true. But I think I think it's more about what type of event we want to throw and what we want to um, accomplish by doing this. Um, personally, I feel like it's a lot of work for just a few people to show up on Zoom, and I'm not. At, at the moment but, um, but it's also cost free i think he also the other thing to think about is that we don't usually meet in the summer so this will require us to to meet in the summer to prepare for a september event just yeah I, uh, we meet in august though don't we yeah we usually do do we i don't I, remember I, I think we try we oh, so we just take july off yeah i think i think the plan would be to take july off yeah Go ahead, Betsy. Why don't we assign a committee to figure it out, to come back with a good date and to organize what they want? You know, just present us with something. Um, I've thought about that. Unfortunately, committees have to be public meetings and they end up being a lot more work. So I would say if you guys are okay with it, let's have, a, let's have this as a kickoff in September. I, I think it's a lot of work to do for June if we just have you know, if it's for six people, if it's going to be more about um, useful uh, looking at grants and talking to people more about what the year ahead looks like, I feel like that's more valuable than a than a reception at this point. Um, so can I get thumbs up if everybody's okay with September and uh, kick off for the year? Okay. Okay. Great. So that's accomplished and we'll come up with a date for that um, later. So Grant, Gail, do you wanna talk about the MCC grant so far? Sure. So we're actually in really super good shape because Charlie did a lot of follow-up. Um, I have a few to submit this week and then we only have two left that we haven't got, I'm sorry, three left that we haven't gotten. Um, which is pretty good. Um, we'll do some follow up. Um, and mostly we're paying them out. I'm putting them together in batches for Michelle instead of sending them one every other day. Um, so that's good news. People are excited. People are sending us pictures of what they've done and stuff. Um, yeah, which, there's some. Do you have any updates on that? Like what else um, people have sent us? Um, I don't have too much, but what I'd like to do is put them all on the Google Drive. Um, one of the things I want to do, if nobody objects, is move all this stuff from the old Google Drive to the new Google Drive so we can kind of retire the old um, Needham Cultural Council um, account because we still have some pictures on there and stuff. So I'm just going to move them all over. And then any pictures we got some from people or brochures or reports. Um, I'll send out an email to all um, and people can just look at um, what's in there and they can see what people are sharing. Um, and the other thing is everybody is highly aware of the painting of the Jersey barriers and we're gonna be paying people um, this week as well along with the revitalization fund in partnership, which is great that we could pay a bunch of local artists and it's been written up everywhere and all that. Well, that's marketing update, but um, just exciting that we were able to do that. We also finally have some numbers in the bank account um, with that payment. I think we're down to about 3000 left in the bank. Um, so if we wanna start fundraising, that would be great. Um, if anybody wants to um, 
figure out how to ask for money from the town. That's an option too. I know Lakshmi mentioned that we're unfunded um, in her weekly update. I don't think we're unfunded. I think we're a little bit underfunded, but um, we do have some money. Um, she, mentioned, she mentioned the Needham Council for Arts and Culture. Yeah, she mentioned meeting Elizabeth when she went to North Hill and yeah. that we are unfunded by the town, which is correct, but we do have some funding, but um, some cultural councils are funded by the town, some are not. Um, anyway, that's my treasurer's report. Any questions, concern, and Sam, we should catch up. Maybe we can um, <laughs> circle back on training and stuff. So, yeah, and I, I asked for, for from Michelle for some more policies and procedures. And I know Gail's working on, you're working on an Excel spreadsheet too to kind of get the process written because yep. it is not easy. And Gail has been very patient getting it all together. So thanks Gail, for I just- Wait, um, hold on a second, Elizabeth. Heather had her hand raised. Heather, yep. you first. Oh. So is there a reason the town doesn't fund the- We've never asked to my knowledge. Okay. And then I don't do they know what fund the process is, but I think maybe Amy can help us there. And are there any other arts art um, groups in Natum that they do fund? I don't them? think so. Not that okay. I know of. No, not to my knowledge, but um, we should definitely talk because the timing is such that it's late summer, very early fall when okay. we start talking Great. about the budget for next year. So, I mean, even if we ask for a couple thousand dollars, I mean, when you're talking about a, you know, a couple like millions and millions, <laughs> more. Are, I know, well, but I think we have to figure out what we're asking for. For we can't just say, give us thirty thousand dollars and we'll give you art. But, but if um, they're doing the mural, well, I guess the mural you want to have it be private. But yeah, we could yeah. talk about that. Elizabeth, you had a comment. Well, I just question. wanted to clarify what you said. I said. No, no, I think she misquoted you. I have a feeling. Well, no, I said the town doesn't fund us, that we get That's money correct. from the state. Yeah. That's correct. The um, town I think does maybe, not fund us. yeah, the town does not fund us, correct, but we've gotten funding recently from the town, and that's what this $3,500 is that Gail's talking about. It was money that used to be in the community arts fund, and it was given to us. So it's I, not. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, we're not you correct. nothing about that because she didn't even know about us. <laughs> yeah, she would. Yeah, I, I imagine that to be very, very true. Yeah, she we are not a funded line item in the budget. Um, the Newton Cultural Council gets $10,000 and that's a new thing from their mayor. Um, and I maybe they only got 5000 this year, but um, it's not very I wouldn't say the majority of local cultural councils are funded by their towns, but it's definitely something that we want in the future um, uh, to discuss and start planting the seeds for. Um, we did just write um, uh, the response to that racial equity statement. Maybe this is a good time to say um, uh, in our last meeting, we um, came, we approved the racial equity statement. So um, we draft, the executive committee drafted our response and um, that's going to the select board and the town manager and Amy's office. And so that includes what, you know, what our priorities are, what we've done, what we're interested in doing, how, and I added a bits about how art can help a community and how important it is for social cohesion and um, just basically the importance of arts in the community for. So hopefully that's um, just one more communication for, for, so that they know who we are, but the more we do get our face out there, the better. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Well, I think that um, our composition of who belongs to us is going to be in, uh, something they're gonna be concerned about. And uh, I know that Bala uh, is a good friend or a friend of Lavashmi's, but um, I think we have to be thoughtful about who uh, joins the council moving forward or invite the proper people. Okay. Um, yes. Oh yeah, and uh, just to clarify, I think uh, Lakshmi, I got introduced to Lakshmi recently after I joined the board. So I was just helping her as, as a town member of the community. Yeah, I did not know her before, but yeah. Cool.
Um, anything else with the MCC uh, grant update? Because I think we'll have more to discuss with recruitment in that section. Um, okay, so we'll move on to the public art committee update, um, which is a pretty big. We are, um, we have a doodle poll out. The public art committee is, I think the day that's gonna win is Monday, May 24th. I'll send a message to anybody on the public art subcommittee to attend that. Our three major projects are the Jersey barriers. So those went up at Sweet Basil. We've got tons of press. It looks great. They're getting paid. Um, Ponchos is the next place to be designed and Bala and Heather have come up with this gorgeous design. They've met with the restaurant owners. So they, our very own artists are going to be um, coordinating that piece, which is awesome. I'm really excited about it. Um, we're probably gonna need volunteers for that. Heather, Bala, did you wanna update anybody on, on that or did I explain that well? You have anything to add? No, that's good. Yeah, that was cool. Probably still, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Bala. <laughs> Yeah, no, we just have met on the design and we're trying to figure out dates uh, on when we want to get started. And we have the approval from the owner. He loves the design. Um, and I know we were looking for volunteers, but I think it, for now we're good. Um, but if we need any help, we'll reach out. Awesome. Okay. Um, the next one is the uh, mural. So the mural, we're going to be meeting on the 24th. Um, Gail, hold on one second. And then the um, mural, uh, uh, Joni has written an amazing RFP for us. So we'll be working on that and the concept of that, which will also probably get a response to the racial equity statement that will help um, sort of guide that statement a little bit more. Um, there's a movement on location that we're excited about. Amy did finally get in touch with the owners of the building that on Highland Avenue, that's um, the CVS Caremark. Um, Trader Joe's building. So there's a potential interest in that location in Needham Heights. We really like that location. Um, the other alternate, uh, other, not alternate, but the other location we had looked at was Highland Ave where the Mathnasium super cuts is on the, they're both on Highland Ave technically. So those were the two locations in mind that we're also talking about in the public art committee. And then um, I can move on to storefronts Needham. Gail, what, what was your question? I just wondered if you could share the wonderful design that you talked about so that others could see. Um, it's still being approved by the select board right now. Um, I don't know if you guys, I don't actually have it super available. If someone wants to hold up their phone, they can, but um, yeah, so that it's, yeah. but it's Mexican inspired. It's tiles and cacti and uh, like sort of the, the coloring is sort of Southwestern. That was, it was pretty awesome. It just as a general rule, I mean, I know we don't have to approve it. It's wonderful, but that's the kind of stuff we should just like plop on the Google Drive so the whole council can see it. I don't know if as it's going to this like this. Uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, I can kind of see it, although you have a background on, so you can't see it. Yeah. So I mean, this yeah. is the tile. Yeah. Oh, cool, Heather. Heather. I can see it on Heather's. That's beautiful. That's tile, and then the other one. Love it's that. Beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a good I, idea for sharing. That. Yeah, thanks for that. Go ahead, Joni. I drove through um, Newton Highlands the other day up Lincoln Street. Mm -hmm. And they have two restaurants there that have um, Jersey barriers. Mm -hmm. And I drove by and I looked at them and I said, those are the shabbiest Jersey barriers I have ever seen. They they had they looked like they had been covered in cloth and the cloth was all straggly and one was blue and one was sort of gray and green and they were and I said, Oh, I'm so happy we have what we have in Needham. They're so pretty. They're good, but Noon has done an amazing job. Uh, they have a whole alfresco in their cultural department. They're doing they're doing um tables, they're doing plantings, they've worked really they're hard. They're doing yeah. And they have, I think places projects. that are a little more visible. Yeah, they've but done a huge amount. I, of, I was, yeah. Um, yeah. it was a moment of pride. You were proud. I got it. Okay. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Um, let, let me give you an update. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. I was just saying, I can share my screen. I have it up on my screen. Do you want me to share to show oh, you? Yeah, yeah. Do you guys want to see it better? Yeah. 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 Yes, definitely. Thanks, Amy. Can you see that? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, that is so nice. Oh, That's great. Ah. Love that. Yeah, they're still um, picking out colors as well. But yeah, Bala did um, some and Amy and um, 
Heather did the other and they just worked together so well. It was really nice. Yeah, we um, want to bring so the cool. inside design from the store outside. Oh, right. Yeah. And then they had the cactus in their walls. So I wanted to bring that what, up. Where Fabulous. is the location? I missed where this is. Ponchos, it's a Mexican restaurant located on Highland Avenue, just down from our storefront next to like Treat Cupcake. Across, across the from Bank of America. Next to a bank across from the bank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really great thank Thanks, you Amy. Thanks, Jordan, I, I think it'll really help their business too because that's going to make it so much more visible people are going to see that and wonder what it is so I wish we could do more barriers but <laughs> for every restaurant but... yeah um so the storefronts Needham is moving along too we've uh, got three locations right now um they just rotated the Needham Art Association rotated a new show so it's there fourth show in uh, the Lisa's Boutique store. Um, Needham Open Studios just installed into 36 Chestnut Street. They've got 13 artists in these two tiny display windows. It looks awesome. Um, all kinds of professional artists are in there, the really different types of work. And then it looks really great next to the Needham High School Senior Studio Sampler Show, which is in the Art Emporium. So it's a very long, um, uh, it's like, you know, two giant storefronts. So you get this amazing walk of like student artwork and then professionals. Um, and the press that's going out on that, like the Needham channel came and interviewed people. And it, I think they just did them both together because just the idea of students and professionals together side by side was kind of a cool story. And actually there's a little development this, um, this Saturday, I'm gonna be touring Jake Auchincloss around the storefronts Needham spaces. So he's gonna come um, down and see them, uh, which is great because we've got a connection with, um, through the Needham Art Association to his uh, director. So she's gonna take um, him down to hopefully on Saturday and we'll walk him around and show him that and the Jersey barriers. And so hopefully, that will go according to plan. Um, and the Needham High School has agreed to leave their artwork in the windows because they were supposed to load out this week. So they're gonna keep it a little bit longer so it won't be empty. Um, and then we have, yeah, then that episode premieres on the Needham channel tomorrow, I think as well. And there's been um, some news in the patch and, oh, Oh no, I forgot. The Needham, it should be in the Needham Times this week, but this is the one in the Jersey Barriers. Do you guys, that's, that's annoying. Well, it was on the front cover of the Times. I think I sent it there. Um, so yeah, it's getting some press and going well. Um, and then Amy has um, pop-up, Project Pop-Up is coming into town soon, which is um, the pop-up stores for up to two locations in Needham. And um, that will bring some artists as well, I think in some of the spaces possibly uh, either. Yeah, this is actually gonna be three locations. Three? Oh my gosh, that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. yeah do you wanna share that? Cause it's so interesting. <clears throat> sure, so the locations have been finalized but the brands that are going in the locations have not, have not yet been finalized. Um, so we've got the former Proud Mary space um, at 1110 Great Plain Ave. And then we've got the former Needham Vision Center space at 1020 Great Plain Ave. And then we've got the bridal shop where Needham Open Studios is at 32 Chestnut Street. That's gonna be a pop-up as well. And there was a call for artists that was put out. So um, the folks, uh, the staff in Newton is, um, is helping to coordinate that, but they broadened the, um, the reach just to allow you know, artists from you know, the region to be able to apply. And so those are being matched because they're trying to match you know, the, the artist with the brand, so it makes sense. Um, so it's another opportunity for, you know, um, artists to display and, and make their work um, available for those to enjoy and, and purchase. So more on that, more details once they're, they're firmed up, but we've got three locations and they're gonna kick off on June 1st. That's great, that's awesome. Congratulations. Um, and heads up, the Needham Vision Center, it does look like it's leaking in the window because there's a water spot that wasn't there before when we were looking at it. So I'll give that Good note. Know. Thank you. I knew you, yeah. Um, okay, so that was it. Does anybody have any questions about um, the public art update? That was a big one for us. 
Okay, and then the next section is the recruitment update. And Elizabeth, we were talking um, that Amy is still um, checking in with the powers that be. I'm sorry, I don't know a better term, but um, the administration at the town of Needham about what the process will be for bringing new people on, whether it's gonna be uh, like a yearly um, process and so it, or on an ongoing rolling basis, if we're always going to be interviewing. So she's checking on that before we start bringing more people on board. But I will say uh, to Elizabeth's point, if you see somebody that that is, uh, or I, I do think that we all need to network, we need to broaden the voices on this organization. So definitely people of color, definitely, um, different types of, of just uh, diversity in general, I think um, is, a, is key. Go ahead, Betsy. I was just wondering, aren't um, those of us who have served for three years supposed to rotate off or can we renew? Um, three years, uh, you get three years and then you can up again for another three years. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and all of that, I was looking at that, that recently, no one seems to be rolling off too soon, maybe um, in the fall uh, we have, people who are going to be um, able to, to choose another three years if they want. Elizabeth. I, I'm up on June 30th. I have my citation from the town of Needham and I don't know what to do. Okay. But June 30th is my date, my three years is up. I would sit up and I think, um, is that when your meeting was or is that what your actual paper says? That's what it's, it says. I was sworn in August 16th. Okay. Uh, but I was appointed on June 30th. Yeah, and I think the way that um, they, they time it in um, the LCC is a little different because um, your end date is August 9th, 2021. Yep. So yeah, you just have a little bit. Uh, longer yeah. Um, yeah and I will I will follow up with um, Amy and Sandy on that process because you're not the only one who is um, I, I automatically got a letter to resign but that might have been because I was the chair at the time so um, we'll follow up on that and see what letter you needed you, you need to get um, it is I mean it's a good question if you're asking it's common practice for six years I know personally it it took me three years to kind of feel like I knew what I was doing and then to get into a leadership and a you know leadership role um, and I'm not sure if everybody else feels like that but um, it definitely took me a few years to figure out um, the, the whole timeline um, and on that note um, June is usually uh, it's when we reevalu we voting happens for the executives the the chair the um, secretary and the treasurer. So next month we'll be re-voting. So everybody can think about, um, not re-voting, voting. Think about whether there's a position they want or um, if, uh, if Gail, Julie and I are doing a good job and, and everybody decides to run again. Um, or maybe we'll have a select board election where everybody wants to run in and um, have a executive chair. I think that's what it's called, executive committee. Um, and then also at that meeting, I think that's our, um, June is our time frame to kind of do like a housekeeping things, which is going over the timeline for the year. I think it would be helpful to talk about what we're going to be doing, um, when throughout the year, last year was a really horrible, um, time year for things happening on time. Everything was pushed back. So I think with so many new members, it'd be good to go over that part. So, um, so that was recruitment. So we'll follow up on that one page. Um, marketing, um, I've got a survey, um, Julia sent it. I'm, I, and I texted or emailed you guys all a link to it if anyone wants to look at it. Um, I'm thinking we're just gonna set, um, put it out on Facebook and see what happens in terms of replies. We got about 45 last year and I felt like it was a good cross section. We added some ethnicity questions this time um, and broadened some other things to get a little bit more data. Um, and that usually informs our council priorities in September. So. The other thing that we were like- Charlie? Yeah. 
Um, can we put it on more than just the Needham page? Can we put it on um, the Needham page, the Heights Alliance, and even Coffee Time? Yeah, I'd love that. I, I think maybe we'll do like some marketing and get it and yeah. some other things. And then ask people to share it and see if we can get people a little more involved. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a great idea. I mean, in a perfect world, we'd be handing it out door to door and um, really getting- Or mailing it. <laughs> and mailing it and yeah, um, getting it to everybody we can. You know, I'll, I'll talk to the marketing committee more about it. And also it traditionally has been a lot, it seems to me that cultural councils have focused on it going to grantees and that um, area a lot. I mean, to me, it seems like it more important to be asking the general town of Needham if we're serving the arts and cultural needs. Yeah. Um, but often in the past, I think historically, it's really been the grantees talking about what they wanted. They were the active ones, but I think the broader our reach, the better. And maybe we can send it to specific organizations. I, we will email it out as well to, to our list. Um, our um, newsletter free trial ran out, which I'm annoyed about. So, oh. so <laughs> um, unless anybody has access to constant contact and wants to send out, I don't think it's worth paying $20 a month for the one time a year to a hundred emails. So we'll just figure it out in a different way. Um, so yeah, that's, does anybody have any questions about that? Go ahead, Jeff. <coughs> I have questions, but um, if we're just gonna send something out to a hundred people, MailChimp is free. Yeah. And it like it does the same thing constant contact does. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same formatting, all the different options. You can even track who gets it and stuff. It's you know, it translates really well. So it's mail or light. Yeah, I mean we use it all the time for our organ a couple of organizations I'm in and pay nothing. So as long as we have such a small population, we can use that. Cool. Um, let's see. Art box, we don't have much to say. The um, It's to the select board for review. Um, it's going to get on their agenda. Emma, I spoke to Emma Curry. She's a lovely, lovely student. She was so appreciative, so excited to work with us. She's going to work on her design a little bit more. Um, and then we'll get it after the select board, it will go to design review board. And the installation company is very excited about moving forward too, because it's a new owner. Um, and then the next thing is advocacy update, which, um, Bala, do you have anything to say? I had one thing to add, but I don't know if you have anything. Yeah, no, I think we talked about the, uh, the budget allocation last time. Um, other than that, there's no other update. And I saw your uh, form for the take action now. Piece. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. If you want to speak to that, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so there, there is this one um, new bill that's um, being uh, proposed by Senator Kennedy. It's called the Cultural Futures Act. It's a, an act to rebuild the Commonwealth. So it's $200 million for um, arts and cultural sector recovery. Um, it comes from COVID relief funding. Um, so it's partially federally funded and to the state. And then, um, so there's a big, push to advocate to your local legislators to get on board with this bill 2246. So um, if you guys could look at that link and maybe um, it, it goes to Denise Garlic. I don't know, does anybody have a regular, I was gonna sign up for her office hours and just chat with her, but um, if anyone talks to her regularly, um, have just mentioned supporting um, that act. It would be really exciting. It would be a Mass Cultural Council um, would hand out the funds. Um, they also just released a $9 million um, cultural facilities fund funding. So that was exciting too. Um, but other than that, that was about it. Any other advocacy updates or questions? Anyone wants to share anything? Cool. And we're, all, we're at the end. And um, so it's just about scheduling. Yay. There, how's the Tuesday? Everybody loving the Tuesday? We get to see Anne McCaffrey's beautiful face. Anne, did you have anything say, to say today? We didn't even get to hear anything from you. I feel totally out of it. I have, I'm like, you've, you guys have done so much. 
the Jersey barriers. I love the store windows. I'm like, yeah, I'm on that committee or I'm on that group. I'm like, I've done nothing. So um, thank you for not kicking me off. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Well, I did I did um, volunteer you to Bala and Heather like, oh, I, I think Anne, Anne's really good at painting and she's got a teenage daughter too. That would be Yeah, really I'd, I'd be happy to paint. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm we tried so grateful for what you've done with COVID and your yeah, posts you. have been fabulous. Your work is incredible. Um, thank you. Good grief. You get a pass for everything. Right? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. In my book. Thank you. Agreed. I'm just glad we get to see your face again. <laughs> um, so Tuesdays, the next one, I, you guys are right, June 15th. It moved from June 21st, so June 15th is the third Tuesday in June. So that would be the next time we see each other. It will be a meeting that will be um, housekeeping. So then we can set the dates for the third Tuesday and I'll try to get all the, the numbers correct this time um, for starting in August and moving throughout the year. Um, Amy, is there a chance that we will not be allowed to be virtual or should we assume this is a virtual meeting? I would say assume it's going to be a virtual meeting unless you hear from me otherwise. I think it's going to take a little time for towns um, and, and cities to figure out all of the logistics involved. So I would say yep. assume virtual until you hear otherwise. And that will be the day the executive order gets canceled too. But that'll be fun. We can celebrate that. And two then two weeks after. Two weeks after everything's open up, we'll watch numbers. Yeah. Three weeks. Don't say that, Joe. It'll be yeah, it'll be two and a half weeks. Okay. And yeah, then we'll no meeting in July. Be fully vaccinated very soon. So the numbers are gonna go down. Be yeah, no, it's not gonna spike. It's not gonna spike like it has been, but no, I think it's too early to be going the speed we're going, but whatever. Nobody's nobody's taking bets or gambling on this, are we? No. Nope. Like gambling with your lives. Sam, I, I, bet wanted there to... is a, I bet there's a line in Vegas somewhere on it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Sam, do you have anything to say? I haven't seen you in a bit. I missed you. Hi. Hi. Um, well, every time <laughs> I say hi to anyone on the computer, my dog barks. It drives me nuts. Um, no, I don't have anything in particular to say. Um, I'm doing well. How's your new business kicking off? Okay. Yeah, it's been fun. Um, it's going well. I still, I still can't taste or smell, which is really sad. Um, oh, so, that'll so it's come been back. a long haul. I know. What's your uh, new business? It's um, uh, uh like do-it-yourself home pottery kits. So it gives you everything you need to either do air dry or ceramic um pinch pots hanging planters or mugs um, and the paint and underglaze. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. So where fun. do you get, where it's already out there somewhere? Yeah. Um, I have a website and then I'm also doing corporate events. So I have my first corporate event soon, which will be fun. Um, yeah. Is anybody thinking what I'm thinking for a September event? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that would be cool. We do need to do more art in these. Yeah, yeah, if we ever have anything we want to do that requires uh, being fired in a kiln, I have one in my basement, so I'm happy to do something or anything we need down there. It's fun. May want to drop, you hear that? drop your URL as long as you have us captive, just saying. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I don't know if I can. No, we can't. No, you can just tell us. Um, yeah, it's, po it's called potterywithapurpose.com. Um, yeah, so feel free to check it out. But yeah, we can totally, um, we can do something ceramics related and I'm happy to fire it. it it's fun. Oh, here's a question. Um, first of all, the Native Women's Club would probably love to have you come and do an event with us, but also were we going to try to be a liaison with the Native Women's Club? Because they have funds to support us, possibly. I don't know what you're talking about. Would I don't either. I, don't don't either. either. I thought Suzanne Savitz might be doing something. I'll talk to them. Yeah, chat it up. And everybody um, follow up on the whoever your grantees were. Um, tomorrow, my son in seventh grade will be seeing Chainsaws, Cheeseburgers and Rock and Roll presenting at um, so cool. Pollard Middle School. So that'll it's be- It's for amazing. the eighth graders too, right? It's, I think it is for both of them, yeah. So Heather, so, get your face in on, on there. Yeah. I hope that my daughter can get, she was actually home 
half of yesterday and today because she feels so cruddy from the vaccine. Aww. So well, hopefully, hopefully she'll tomorrow's be tomorrow's a new day. Believe me, I've never been so happy for her <laughs> to be sick. <laughs> <Daddy's> sick. <laughs> like, I just remember that was so outrageous. At first I thought, no, absolutely not when I was reading about that guy. And then he I got know. such great reviews and people were like, he's really on to something. And we loved having him at the house and somebody gave them a degree and something. So I hope he's great. He did, some great. he did some great press. He even tried to read it, reach out to Needham's PIO and say, hey, here's my press release, send this out. And she was like, who is this I know. Do you but, think it's the chainsaw murderer or something like that? I know. I know. Really? But he got some press out there. I was really, you know, yeah. he's he said he's over a hundred local cultural councils. That's amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, he's really d- done a lot, of, a lot of outreach. So we can all take a cue from Chainsaw's cheese for using rock and roll. Cutting okay, so we'll wrap it up. I'm so glad we got to all chat with, with you guys and I'll see you all on June 15th. <laughs> Reach out if you have questions. Thank you so much, everyone. 48 Thank minutes you. is a record. Bye. Bye. Thank Thanks, you. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye.